is David Sowerby, an equity portfolio manager at Loomis Sales, who helps manage $3 billion in assets. David also heads the Investment Advisory Committee of Michigan State's $50 billion pension fund. Uh, he is in Detroit. Thanks for joining us, David. Uh, Absolutely. We appreciate it. Let's talk a little bit uh, about the commodities picture, I, I think, is one of the most interesting things. We've been talking about it uh, throughout the entire program here. What do you make of the incredible uh, run that commodities are on right now, and, and, and how do you play it? It's, it's primarily global growth, global demand. That's two parts. I think the farther out part is that it, it's still an inflation hedge. And while inflation's not a problem, I think inflation potentially in years out could be a problem. And in, in the near term, you, you just simply play it, I think, on the, uh, on, on the basic material side. On the chemical side, there's opportunities. And, and within portfolios, you know, maybe about a 10% weight, 8% weight in basic materials. That's how, I, that's how I'd play it. And most importantly, within total portfolios, why commodities uh, deserve a place is the low correlation as a real return asset class and as a potential hedge against future inflation. All right, you know, I want, to bring, I want to bring in Ira Epstein as well. He's managing director of the Ira Epstein division of the Lynn Group. Ira has been in the trading business for more than a quarter of a century. Uh, let me ask you, Ira, what you make of the commodities run that we've seen. I mean, is it going to end anytime soon? David says you, it's, it's a hedge against future inflation concerns. Well, you know, the market hasn't even turned its attention yet to inflation. We're still betting on the problems that we're seeing in Greece and Portugal, the different credit ratings, the QE2 programs. The government is still telling us don't worry about inflation, even today with reports that came out. What are you going to do when real inflation becomes the picture? And that's what the markets are telling you. The grain markets, it doesn't matter if you go to the soft commodities, almost everywhere you're turning your attention, something is making highs, multi-year highs, and sometimes decade and lifetime highs. And I think you're going to see more of that in 2011, a lot more of it. What sectors are you liking right now? What are your recommendations? Well, c consumers had a great year. It's up over 20% for the year. But I think still in early 2011, it's the place to be because the opportunity to find consumer stocks with free cash flow yields of 5 to 6%, which is still more attractive than the long-term average, uh, I think is compelling. One name that I like in that space is Liberty Media Interactive. It's primarily a play on uh, the internet shopping for QVC. They had a terrific period after Thanksgiving. There's one place in consumer discretionary. On the energy side, there's opportunities for a name like El Paso, which is the, uh, the, the gas distributor, as well as on the E&P side, a natural gas. So I think energy makes very good sense. Technology does as well, and technology has lagged this year. However, in the most recent period since uh, early October, you've seen tech stocks rally more than 10% or keep more pace with the market. And there, like the consumer sector, the free cash flow yields are compelling uh, at the same time that you're seeing a continued improvement in revenue as well as earnings estimates for 2011. Hey, hey, David, it's Julie here. To get back to the consumer Hi, for just a minute, um, whether you're talking mm -hmm. about Liberty or talking about some of the other consumer-related companies, how concerned are you about margins, though? I mean, whether you're talking about the online retailers offering free shipping or the deep discounting that we've seen this holiday season, I mean, isn't that going to mean bad news for margins when we get the next earnings reports? I think by the time we write the final tale of the tape for this holiday shopping season, expectations headed, heading into it were for about a 2% at best comp store sales number. You're probably likely to see numbers more like 3.5% or better based on traffic as well as buying patterns. I think that's going to be positive for margins. And the key for me on, on the stock side is the valuations are attractive when the profit margins are still in an expansionary mode. It's maybe less about pure retail and more about uh, travel, leisure. That, that's where I think there's also opportunities on the consumer side. Ira, does that make sense to you? I mean, we still have almost 10% unemployment. Uh, we got a drop today in first-time jobless claims, but by 3,000 to 420,000 still seems like a pretty high number to me. Why are they going out and spending more money over Christmas? Well, I think we feel better. It's that simple. If you go back for the past couple of years, we've all been scared as can be as we've entered the holiday period. And right now as Americans, it's really simple. I think we feel better. I think you see it everywhere. And while there's that big unemployment number, those that are working aren't as scared as they were a year ago. 
Hey, Ira, I mean, I know we feel better. It's, it's, it's obvious when you walk into restaurants and they're actually your table's full, but you know, how do we resolve the fact that in places like San Francisco, you still have in that Bay Area unemployment at 21.5%? At I mean, that is painful. You do QE2, just what we're doing. You keep throwing money at the system to fix the system, and then you worry later, just as the Fed is going to do, about inflation. The first thing is to keep the patient alive, get the programs going, give the tax breaks, do what the president is doing. And I realize people say that we're just spending out of control. We'll control it. But first, let's get those 21% unemployment numbers way down. So you're not worried about the deficit. You say that's job two. First, get the money flowing in the economy. Is that right? That's exactly what I'm saying. So what do you guys think of the uh, prospects for the euro area? I mean, is it possible that we actually see a breakup or uh, some countries exiting the euro currency, David? I don't think anybody will exit willingly. However, somebody might get voted off the island if they don't show more fiscal discipline by, by those countries, specifically Germany, that have traditionally always shown fiscal discipline. If I, if I were to handicap it, I would say there's probably a... 10 to 15 percent probability that in the next three or four years that number is smaller. However, at 10 to 15 percent, that's still uh, that's still small by comparisons. I think most countries will stay in, but if you don't get your fiscal house in order, somebody will be voted off the island. But David, maybe no one will exit. But will countries like Poland and the Czech Republic be more reluctant to jump in? You don't want to. You, that's a great question. You don't want to join the party when, when there's when there's uncertainty. Investors don't want to invest in periods of uncertainty, and and they don't want to join the party when they're showing more economic strength without than being with the the being part of the euro. I don't blame them. They want to see those countries that have not gotten it right, specifically in Southern Europe, show that they are going to get it right from a fiscal responsibility standpoint. Then they're more willing to be participants, and I don't blame them in the near term for being somewhat hesitant about being part by, by being part of the euro. Ira, how much do you guys actually care about this down the floor there in Chicago? I mean, it seems like only when the risk trade is off do we ever hear anyone mention this. You're pretty right. Uh, we look at it that the euro's got problems, and those problems are not going away in the near term. And yes, commodity markets rally and they break, and we saw the euro, for whatever reason, go up 10 cents recently and then give it all up. We're looking for the euro still to go back into the 120 range, so we think there's another dime left on the downside. But how it gets there is what's interesting. And right now, there's just cross currency plays going on left and right. The Swiss franc euro been one of the most interesting trades, yet you hear very little talk about it. But that was way to back out of it and play a European currency versus another European currency and get the benefit of the weak euro if you thought that was going to happen. It's exactly what occurred. All right. Hey, Ira, thanks so much for joining us. Ira Epstein there from the Lynn Group. Also, David Sowerby joining us from Loomis Sales.